there's so much to share. I think of Jesus, he said, there's so many things I have in my heart to tell you, but there's not enough time, or you're not ready to bear them, or well, maybe a combination of the two. <laughs> so, but I, I have this quote, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I want to talk about Dietrich Bonhoeffer a little bit. I have a whole message on righteousness that I want to share, but um, I'm not sure I'll be able to share that today. So I, I was led, actually, Mike shared about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He told me the other day, we were at prayer meeting, he said he brought him up. I heard of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, but I... I have a degree in German language, okay, a bachelor's degree in German language and a double major in international studies in German language. We actually have a German ministry that Bernhardt and I do together. We do videos. So for those of you who know, we actually have a corporation in Germany. We are a German ministry. And it's, it's just cool how God's worked that out. I had a, an hour conversation last week with Bernd, who is our German counterpart. And um, so uh, God bless him. So when you think about our brothers and sisters in Germany, pray for our German ministry that God would, right now YouTube is really how we're doing it, but that God would bring eyeballs onto those videos that the, the angels could bring people to videos, guys. Amen. God can do that. We have a, a, a video on inner peace has over a thousand uh, views. We have an interview with a man of God in the Catholic church, the 24 seven prayer church, prayer, and it's got 7,500 views. Um, so we do have our, we have a growing channel that is getting tr some traction, so we're thankful for that. Um, but anyway, I so I knew who, I heard Dietrich Bonhoeffer, but I, I didn't know like his story. So um, I felt moved and excited about it. And I was like, so I started reading about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So just to give you a quick overview, he was a Lutheran pastor when the Nazis were coming to power in Germany. Okay, and he um, really had a problem with. The, the, the racism and the, the persecution of the Jewish people, right? And so he actually, he, he, he was a theologian and he um, had a lot of connections throughout the world, ecumenical, ecumenical connections. And so, um, so he ended up starting one of the founding members of the confessional church in Germany. And basically the confessional church, they were not okay because you know, if you were a Jew, you, can't, you couldn't be a pastor. Because the Nazi party started basically taking over the church. And unless you were willing to take, you know, an oath to the Nazi party, you could not be on this platform. Wow. Right? You had to be a Nazi. You, or you had to be okay with the, the Heil Hitler and all that stuff. Uh, and so, so they were not okay with that. So he started a seminary. So anyway, he started out as a... Um, his hero was Gandhi because he was very much a pacifist. So he really did not believe in uh, violence at all. And so, but the funny thing is, he, through the progression of seeing the Nazis come to power and the atrocities that they were committing on the Jewish people, the Holocaust, which happened, by the way, six million Jews were slaughtered, uh, murdered, um, brut brutally killed. Um, and, and so he went from become, being a pacifist to actually actively attempting to assna assassinate Hitler. So he made this trans transition from being a pacifist and wrestling with ethics and wrestling with his, you know. And so I want to just read a quote. He said, silence in the face of evil is evil, is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. So silence in the face of evil is itself evil. Uh, God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. And so he wrestled with this, and he finally determined that it was actually wrong for him not to attempt to assassinate Hitler. So he actually became the conscience of many of the resistant movement. So you probably don't know, but they were generals, high-level generals that were Christians, that were very good Nazis on one side, but on the other side they were doing all they could and hide it to work against the Nazi party, to help Christians, to help Jews, and so those are really the heroes of Germany that we don't hear about. The patriots, the true patriots. Yeah. That, that, you know, the German, uh, the German heart was really um, violated with the twistedness of the patriotism that, you know, the nationalism that took place um, that Hitler did. He really twisted them because they were vulnerable after World War I. The nation was, in, it was, it had been ravaged. It was treated poorly. You know, um, after after the reparations were very hard on the German people. They, you know, the f inflation was terrible. They had to. They could buy a loaf of bread. They had to go with a, a wheelbarrow, full of money, because that's how bad the inflation was. And so you had to pay with trillions. I think it was some ridiculous amount of marks. 
And so the Germans were ripe for uh, somebody to say, hey, I'm the strong guy. This is the way we're going to bring you up, right? And so, but anyway, so Dietrich Bonhoeffer is a, is a hero of the faith, and he stood against a, a wicked political system. And uh, so I think the Lord is saying something about this today, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and I want to say he was a pastor, and he was actively uh, standing against a wicked political system. Amen. And um, he was a Lutheran minister. And so um, today, we need to stand against evil. We have a, a known evil, which is abortion, so we all need to be doing something, whether it's giving, speaking up, doing something. You know, Life Choices Pregnancy Center, you could become a partner there. Sign petitions, do something. So that's something we can do. Um, so, but Dietrich Bonhoeffer is somebody I think we need to emulate. Now, I, I want to talk about a couple things. Dad's like, when I talk to dad at dinner, sometimes he's like, you need to tell the church this, right? So um, bear with me here, because I want to talk a little bit about nationalism. Okay, this is very important because um, we, a lot of us, you know, just so you know, a lot of us support Trump because he stands for righteousness. Now, we're not voting for a national pope or pastor, right? We voted for a president that will stand against wickedness, right? And so I think it's funny. Jesus actually insulted people, by the way. Read the New Testament. <laughs> Jesus called a woman a dog. Now, I'm not, I think he did it to reveal her heart, and I'm not saying Trump, Trump's just a jerk sometimes, so let's be real. But Christians are like, you're not, that's not very nice. You know, niceness is not a fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> Kindness is... Joy is, goodness is, but niceness is not a fruit of the Spirit. So <laughs> Christians get really screwed up in their thinking. So you'll vote for somebody who will abort babies, but you just don't like this guy's attitude, so you're going to vote for wickedness over somebody who will stand for righteousness? That's just wrong. Like, where's your moral bearing, you guys, right? So... <laughs> And then we start getting upset with pastors who will actually say something like that. Yes. Wait, what's that about, right? And, and Dad shared the verse earlier. What, what fellowship can light have with darkness? That's the scary thing about the church today, you guys. The, you know, the Democrats are saying unity. This is funny. They always, whenever they are in power, they say, you should do what we're doing. You be in unity. You need to cross the aisle. Right? It's like, no, I, I don't even believe against what you believe. There, we can't have unity anymore. That's right. There's no unity. Righteousness can't have unity with wickedness. Yeah. Right? You can't be in unity with somebody who actually wants to strip your freedoms away. Yes. And um, I'll say this, that the, the political... I was reading um, a book on the Black Robe Regiment, and they said the political debate should be the difference of... Oh, thanks... Tyranny versus liberty, not the left or the right. We should be talking about tyranny versus liberty. That's, that's, that's really the, the essential debate. And the funny thing, or the, you know, the, the power of the few over the power of the many. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's funny because the Republican Party has become the party of the people. And, and they say that Trump is a populist, which means he's rallying people with patriotism and flags, right? And the funny thing is the Democrats are actually, they claim to be the party of the people, right? It's the Labor Party, you know, the Socialists, all this stuff. They're actually the, they become the party of the few and, and um, the aristocrats that are trying, the elitists are trying to control everybody else. Is that interesting? So please bear with me. If you don't think pastors should talk about politics, you know, the, uh, you know, people say you shouldn't legislate morality. You can't legislate morality. The truth is morality will be legislated, but the question is whose morality will be legislated? And so Christians say our kingdom's not of this world. Well, guess what? God has given you, you we the people. You know, uh, one of the representatives this past week said, you, you, God, the will of God has no interest in this Congress. And I prayed, you are wrong, sir. You work for us. The we, the people, the will of God is absolutely essential to our desire as a people. And if you will not seek the will of God, then you will be thrown out. 
Yeah, amen. You will be thrown out. And I want you to know, I looked this up, let me tell you. Guess who the first representative, the first speaker of the House of the United States Congress was? He was a Lutheran pastor. He had been a pastor. And I'd say, that's, this is Nancy Pelosi's um, predecessor. The very first. And I'd say, hey, precedent. You guys know what precedent is when something happens for the first time? We're not making any new precedents if a pastor decides to talk about politics. Because it happened, the very first U.S. representative was a Lutheran pastor. And actually, the funny thing is he was upset with his brother who gave the famous speech where he took off his black robe and he revealed he had a military uniform on. And he said, men, we're going to go grab our arms and go fight in the Revolutionary War. The pastor from the pulpit. And his brother said, I thought you shouldn't talk about politics. And then guess what? When the British marched in, his tune changed because he saw how they ravaged the city. And I, I just think of, I read from Maccabee, the book of Maccabee, is the Maccabees, there were some Jews that say, we won't fight on the Sabbath. Nope. God says, don't do anything on the Sabbath, so we're not going to fight. So guess what? The Romans slaughtered a thousand Jews. And so Maccabee and his son says, well, you know what? We're a little, hopefully a little smarter than them. I don't care if it's the Sabbath or not. We're going to fight because we will not die. And so anyway, so this, 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 this Lutheran minister well, I think their dad actually brought Lutheran. He was the first Lutheran minister in the nation. You could check my history. Um, so <laughs> there's a precedent here. <laughs> so, so we should talk about politics. And yes, our kingdom is not of this world, right? And, uh, you know, the, we got the blue people on this side of the street. We got the red people on this side of the street. Guess what our color is? Purple. Purple. Why is that? Because it's a royal color. And so the church should never pick sides blindly and just follow that party. No, we are bringing the kingdom of God into these parties, right? And so if, if, if dad uses the example of if this is the truth, which it is, the Bible, and, and you know, the left is going this way and it always shifts, the right's going this way. You guys, we, the Bible is not left of center or right of center, it is the truth, right? And so the left is just running full speed in this direction, and they've actually jumped on like a motorcycle, and they're driving that way. And the right is continuing to drift. Yep. And even, you know, say, hey, you know, I think it'd be fun to ride in your scooter. Let's jump on there together. And they're going that direction. The word stands here. And then people say, Pastor, you shouldn't be political. What does the Bible say? Right? We should talk about what the Bible says. Um, so this is interesting. <laughs> so... <laughs> And they knew what Israel should do. We should discern the times. We should understand the spirit that's driving the nation, right? It's a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of globalism. So I want to come to talking about nationalism versus globalism. And there's a deception in the church today. And it's being driven by the Democrat Party. And they're saying that we are Nazis. They are calling us Nazis. They're calling us nationalist Christians. And apparently there's a, Mariam really said, there's a 500 pastors, woke evangelical pastors, who if they were here today, they would call us Christian nationalists. Yeah. So I'm telling you this, ringing the bell, guys, here. We need to understand what that means. Now I want to, so, so bear with me, I want to strip this down a little bit, okay? So Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in Nazi Germany, the nationalist church were the church that started supporting the Nazi. Actually, they were forced to take, let the Nazi party dictate to them how to do church. The confessional church says, no, we're gonna serve Jesus, we're not gonna serve the state. We're gonna serve Jesus, we're gonna respect the Jews, we're gonna stand with the Jews and minorities, right? And so what's happening is Satan, he always twists things. He's the father of lies, right? And so I want you to know something. This is so important, so listen to me. Hitler was a racist, socialist, globalist. He was a globalist. The spirit of Antichrist has always been globalist. Now I want you to know, God has ordained the nation. Genesis 11, our foundational doctrines come from, uh, from Genesis. God ordained the sovereign nations. When he confused the languages of the Tower of Babel, because they said, I want you, the order that God gave to man, fill the earth, Multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. 
What did they say? They said, screw you, God. We're going to do what we want to do. We're going to build a tower. We're going to stay right here. And God said, fat chance. Because my plan is to fill the earth. Forgive my language, okay? I'm trying to make a point. Fill the, fill the earth. Subdue it. And they said, no, we're going to stay here. We're going to appoint, you know, Nimrod or whatever. Or who, somebody is going to be our leader. And we're going to be a globalist nation. A globalist state. So there's always been a fight between nationalism, nationalism and globalism. Now, I want you to hear this. Hitler abused and twisted nationalism. Right? He, and the, the German people are still suffering from that, that wound, that deep wound in their, in their psyche. Um, even when I was in, in 2008, when the, the, uh, the World Cup was there, they were shocked. There were German flags everywhere, and they were kind of ashamed of their boldness. <laughs> they didn't know what to do because they were like, we're really excited about our football team, but we know we shouldn't be. And so they have German flags everywhere. And you guys just don't understand. And let me give you just a little, just a little glimpse into what it's like. When I was in Germany, I had a friendship with this, this young lady, and she, she was so nice. She invited me to the... Um, to the, uh, the student group, and if I, it wasn't for her inviting me, I wouldn't have had Christian friends probably. But she remembers seeing the Spider-Man movie where Spider-Man jumps on top of the Empire State Building, and there's this, it's a beautiful shot, like, right? And the American thinks, that's really cool, Spider-Man. And we don't think anything about it. But the German, oh, what they see is this American flag is just like grotesquely filling up the screen. And we're just like, it's an American flag. It's pretty cool. It's, you know, Spider-Man on top of a building with an American flag, no big deal. And so, but they're like, that's just a little bit too patriotic. It's just too much. You know, you shouldn't do that. Don't be proud of your nation. Um, so anyway, just to kind of give you a, a, a glimpse into that German mentality. Um, but so what I'm trying to say here, God ordained the, the sovereign nations. And really, you guys, you, you know about the check and balances of our nation, right? There's, there's three branches of government, which come from the book of Leviticus, I think it is. It says, God is our king, he's our, our lawgiver, and he's our judge. And I, I still want to see, if you ever see any documentation about the family fathers talking about that, because they knew the Bible. The Bible says God is our king, executive branch, our legislative, our lawgiver, and our judge. And our founding fathers inspired we could probably say by the Holy Spirit and by the word of God, they said, no man should have the right to have all those powers in one place. That is why impeaching somebody because you don't like his hair is very dangerous for our freedoms. Because it makes the president subservient to um, the Speaker of the House. If you can impeach somebody because you just don't like them, then guess what? We're no longer a separation of power. So, so the Founding Fathers divided those powers, the separation of powers, so we wouldn't, there would, absolute power would not be concentrated in the power of one man or one woman or a small group of people. Oligarchy is what we're seeing today. That's what's happening right now, is they're taking the power from the people, they're concentrating it into a few, right? And so, um, <laughs> so in the same way, God ordained the nation, sovereign nations, to balance each other, checks and balances. And so what happened to Hitler, he said, you know what, we're going to be a really racist people and we're going to kill Jews and we're going to actually start taking over other countries, Poland, you know, Belgium, France. Like, it was scary. Can you imagine? Bombs are falling on London and you're afraid that um, they're going to start rolling the tanks in any day, right? The British people will no longer, they'll be subservient to a foreign dictatorship and nobody was helping them. FDR did not want to help them because Americans were isolationists, right? Because we already fought the war to end all wars. Why should we help you? And I want you to know, Churchill, he represents the sovereign nation state. Churchill was a sovereign nationalist. And, and he, sound the alarm, stood against the globalist threat, and he, he rallied a... Uh, the Allied powers were a, an alliance of nation states. Patriotism is not wrong. Your American patriotism is a good thing. God has ordained nations. Na nationalism is a good thing. It can be twisted and abused, but it is a good thing. And so I just, want you, I just wanted to share that today. Because <laughs> there is a lie coming at us. And they're saying that we are Nazis. They're saying that the Christians that stand for righteousness are wrong. 
So when you hear this, we have to be discerning. You know, even I was reading, even Hitler himself during the Olympics of 1933, I think it was, he was saying, oh, those communists, they're acting in a spirit of antichrist. They're antichrist. So Hitler himself, who was operating in the spirit of antichrist, unquestionably, he was blaming other people, the communists. That's a whole other story, communism, <laughs> right? Which, while, while I'm talking, communism is basically making government the god, right? When the government becomes too big, it becomes god for too many people. So I just I want you guys to hear this today that we need to we need to discern what's happening. We need to understand what's happening, and um, yet America's not the savior of the world. Jesus is, but we truly I truly believe that God's not done with America. You guys, I talked to a brother in Germany, and it's so sad in my heart. They're still not permitted to sing in church. You know, Americans would say, "Go to hell." This is worship. You cannot tell us to how we can or cannot worship our God. And I'll tell you, that is a spiritual attack. Satan knows that God is enthroned in the praises of his people. If he can shut our, our mouths down, if he can shut our joy down, if he can shut our praise down, that's our weapon, the weapon of our warfare. Yes, if, and he's shutting down the church in Germany. They cannot sing. You guys, Christians get together and sing, even if it's at midnight, hiding in the woods. That's what we do, right? So and it, it's all veiled in a cloak of, 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 of uh, cons being considerate, right? And, and, but it's, it's just so dangerous. Of course, we are as Christians. We, we want, we don't want anybody to die. Like, you know, we don't. But, but I want you to know there are things more important than your health. Yes. What is more important than your health? Freedom. Liberty, courage. Religious freedom, freedom of assembly. Nobody's talking about freedom of assembly. I think we should value the freedom of assembly more than our health. I mean, how, this is a perfect storm, guys. How ironic. Don't be six feet. You know, if you get six feet to somebody else, they might tell you something that disagrees with what the narrative is. Right? If you get two people together, they might say, hey, this is something's funny here. <laughs> something's fishy. Something's rotten in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to share that on my heart today. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, nationalism, globalism. We know the Bible tells us Satan wants to, he wants to rule the nations, right? There is an antichrist that will rise to power and it will be a globalist state. It will control the nations. And the Lord will permit that to happen for a period. When we see that, I hope it's not... I hope it's not in my lifetime, but you know what? I heard somebody say recently, it's very, it's very inconsiderate to say, oh, you know, let me have peace in my lifetime. But so what do you want your children to have a problem? Yeah. If the battle's going to happen, let it happen in my lifetime so my children can f live in freedom and peace. Yes. Amen. So let me just encourage you. When we see the Antichrist rise to power, that will be such an encouraging day. You know Why? Because we'll, we'll know the coming of Jesus is very soon. Hey, you think about that. Yeah. So when we see that happen, and the Lord will give the, the believing church, the Gideon army, the discerning spirit to understand that's the Antichrist, then you were like, the times won't be fun, but we know the return of Christ is imminent. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> so, so praise the Lord. So let's go forward understanding and discerning the spirit of the age. And I don't believe it's time for America to fall from the scene of the nations. That there's a, a living church in America, a Gideon's army, that God is not done with yet. He's not, there's so much light. And you know, you think about, <laughs> you think about it. The word says, the fight, he said, you know, Jeremiah said, I didn't want to speak of God's word anymore. I said, God, I'm tired of you. I don't want to speak of the word. He didn't quite say it like that. But it said, there was a fire in my bones. And I couldn't help but speak it. Amen. So I just, I declare there has been decades, centuries of the word preached into the heart of the American people. <laughs> and it will, it's about to erupt, you guys. It's about, it's going to be like a fire. Amen. It's going to be a fire that burns the wickedness and consumes the chaff. And that's, that is what is about to happen. I know, I know on authority there is an eruption of the glory of God. It's about to break forth and it will not be stopped. 
And you know, and this is a word that the Lord's given me to declare, when a volcano begins to erupt, nothing can stand in its way. And it completely changes the landscape. It will change everything, and it's about to happen. So guys, hold on. Keep standing. Keep believing. Don't give up. Whatever you're going through, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever, continue to stand, and having done all, to stand, and we will see a victory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll give glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, let's, amen. Well, we still need to receive tithes and offerings today, so, um, so you should have envelopes on the back of your, uh, in front of your seat. Also, uh, please get this slide up here. So we have, you can give on PayPal, ChristChurchInternational.org forward slash give. Our, our mailing address is Christchurch International, PO Box 2125, Longmont, Colorado, 80502. And I wanted to say thank you guys for watching on the internet. Who's ever watching? Whenever you're watching, God bless you. <laughs> Amen. So let's, let's give in faith today. And let's, let's continue to stand in faith. You know what? You guys, we're believers. We're not doubters. What does a believer do? Believe. A believer believes. So if you're not believing, start believing. <laughs> If you're not believing to be healed, start believing. If you're not believing to increase, start believing. If you're not believing to be delivered, start believing. Is it really that simple? Yes. Start. Turn your believer on. If it's off, flip the switch. Boom. Turn it on. Start believing. I believe God's word. And it's counted to me as righteousness. Amen. So start believing that God wants to increase you today. Praise the Lord. Well, let's bless the tithes and offerings. Father God, we thank you for the tithes and offerings. We thank you that it represents our blood, sweat, tears. Uh, Lord, the fruit of our labor, we bring it to you, Lord, because we want you to own our heart, not money. So we bring our tithes and offerings to you. Lord, show us and how to be generous this week. Lord, your word says that we should scatter abroad. And we should, we should there's one who, who, who gives, but it, it, he, he actually increases. So we pray that you give us a revelation of, of sowing seed and increasing. So we thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. We bless the tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I preached myself happy. <laughs> okay. So I encourage you guys to, we have a YouTube channel. I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button every time we upload new videos. You'll know um, we also... Let's pull up the healing room slide real quick. We, I think we're up to episode like number 42. And so I've been preaching four days a week on healing. So if you need a physical healing, I was teaching on three levels of faith, right? The first level is no faith. The good news is faith comes by hearing. So you can have little faith. You just need a little bit of faith to move mountains. And then our faith, we want to get to the place of great faith. And actually, fourthly, is exceedingly growing faith. And so if you don't have faith to be healed, demonstrate a little bit of faith by listening or finding the word of God. Because God's word is health and healing to all your flesh. So you can either join us this week um, or watch on YouTube, Facebook, or I'm starting to post them on Spotify. So if you're a podcaster and just like to listen to audio, you can tune into that. And it's going to build your faith for healing. Amen. Well, let's stand. And I want to do a couple of declarations before we go. Let's pull it. Can you pull up 2 Chronicles 7.11? That's not it. There we go. So insert your name here. Matthew successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. Now let's say it like we mean it. Matthew successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. Amen. Hebrews 9.11. And it says that Jesus has become the high priest of good things to come for me. Jesus is your high priest of your tomorrow. He's the high priest of this week. He's the high priest of good things to come, not bad things, not discouraging things, not disappointing things, good things. Amen. And let's finish with our stride. And this says that our stride is becoming longer, our embrace is larger. 
Yes, God of the angel armies is with me. So let's say that again. My stride is becoming longer, my embrace larger. Yes, God of the angel armies is with me. Amen. Well, I just want to bless you guys today. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the name of Jesus that's above every name. And I just, we just put that name, the name of Jesus. We thank you that the name of Jesus is on every doorpost. Every, 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 every head, every forehead, we thank you for writing the name of Jesus on our lives. The blood of Jesus says that Satan cannot enter. And we just declare the blood of Jesus speaks better things about us than the blood of Abel. So we declare the blood of Jesus has settled all of our accounts. So I just declare that over you today that the blood of Jesus is speaking good things over you. And it says forgiven. It says protected. It says provided for. It says healed. So I speak that. And I declare God's favor is upon you and is surrounding you, following you, going before you, and showing up everywhere you go this week. And that your steps are ordered of the Lord. So Lord, we trust you with each other until we get to see each other again. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Bring your youth this on, the, on Friday night. Amen.